Permafrost is frozen ground, which remains frozen all year round for at least two consecutive years. It is found in cold climates of high latitudes or high altitudes, where the ground does not thaw completely, even in summer. Permafrost can consist of rock, sediment, and soil, and contains varying quantities of ice, which acts like cement to bind the different materials together. Most of present-day permafrost formed during or since the last ice age. Just on top of the permafrost is a thin layer of soil, the active layer. It thaws each summer and refreezes each winter. It can range from 30 to 200 centimeters. Permafrost, on the other hand, can go as deep as 1,500 meters. The repeated freezing and thawing of the active layer in permafrost soils can produce interesting patterns on the ground. Ice wedge polygons often indicate the presence of permafrost. In some places, extreme cold conditions cause the frozen ground to contract and crack. In spring during snowmelt, the cracks fill with water, which freezes in the permafrost, forming a thin vertical ice vein. In the next winter, the ground will contract and crack again along the existing ice vein. This crack will once again be filled with water, which will freeze with the permafrost widening the ice vein. This process continues for centuries, millennia, or even tens of millennia, forming the famous ice wedges. Presently, permafrost occurs in as much as 25% of the exposed land surface in the Northern Hemisphere, as well as under shallow shelf seas that were flooded after the last ice age. It can be found in wide areas in Russia, Canada, Alaska, China, and Greenland. In Europe, permafrost can be found in Scandinavia and in high mountain regions. In Germany, only at the Zugspitze. Increasing global temperatures, however, have resulted in the slow degradation of permafrost worldwide, with serious consequences. Thawing permafrost has a huge impact on local ecosystems, economies, landscapes, and topography. Due to climate change, Arctic summers get warmer and longer, causing the active layer to penetrate deeper and deeper into the frozen ground each year. If the active layer reaches too deep, it cannot refreeze completely during the winter. This causes the permafrost to recede each year. Permafrost contains frozen water, which acts like cement, binding loose sediment together. When this ice melts, the ground becomes weak and unstable. Weakened coastlines, compounded by the effects of retreating sea ice, warmer waters, and longer storm seasons, become more vulnerable to erosion. In towns and cities built on permafrost, infrastructure was constructed assuming that the solid foundation of permafrost would not change. The loss of this permafrost can result in shifting and settling of the ground, which can damage or even destroy infrastructure. This disrupts everyday services and costs national economies hundreds of millions due to relocations or increasing cost of repairs. In high altitudes and steep mountain terrain, thawing permafrost increases the risk of rock falls and landslides, which can trigger additional hazards. The loss of permafrost has a huge impact on the ecosystem as well. Permafrost is impermeable to water. The loss of permafrost under bodies of water can cause the water above it to seep through the ground. 
triggering the loss of innumerable lakes and wetlands. These are just some of the dangers of thawing permafrost. However, thawing permafrost could entail even further reaching consequences, affecting the entire planet. The acceleration of global warming. Organic matter such as animal and plant remains were buried and frozen into the permafrost during and since the last ice age. This organic matter has been frozen, preserved in the permafrost for thousands of years. Just like a gigantic freezer, the permafrost keeps this organic matter preserved up to this present day. When permafrost thaws, this organic matter will be exposed to microbes, which can then break down the carbon-based organic matter, releasing either carbon dioxide or methane into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide and methane are greenhouse gases, which trap heat in the atmosphere, increasing global temperatures. This would then lead to the accelerated thawing of permafrost. This creates a feedback cycle called the permafrost carbon feedback cycle. Permafrost carbon feedback is irreversible on short human timescales. The organic matter in permafrost accumulated over tens of thousands of years and thus reduced the carbon content of the Ice Age atmosphere. But now portions of this huge amount of carbon get released within decades. Although warmer climates will also enhance plant growth, and although increased vegetation removes some carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, it can only do so to a smaller degree. It cannot fully compensate for the much greater carbon emissions from thawing permafrost. Permafrost regions may contain about 1,500 gigatons of carbon in the form of frozen organic matter, nearly twice as much as is currently in the atmosphere. It is estimated that a large portion of the frozen organic matter could thaw and decompose, resulting in the release of additional greenhouse gases into the atmosphere over the next decades and centuries. Thawing permafrost entails many known risks. The initial effects and damages have already been observed in many permafrost regions of the world. However, the magnitude, timing and urgency of some of these threats remain uncertain. Because there are too many changing variables. Constantly changing landscapes, for example, often produced varied and opposing effects on the permafrost whether because of increased vegetation due to a warming climate, or increased snow cover, which insulates the ground from cold air temperatures. And in some areas, researchers have observed increases in the thickness of the active layer, while the permafrost temperatures remain largely unchanged. In other areas, the active layer is stable, while the underlying permafrost is rapidly warming. Furthermore, recent observations could change our previous understanding of permafrost. For example, in Siberia, large craters formed rather suddenly. Scientists assume that natural gas collected under impermeable permafrost layers and eventually erupted in a burst, 
leaving behind a big crater. There is still much to be learned about permafrost. In pursuit of understanding, climate researchers and geoscientists have established the Global Terrestrial Network for Permafrost to organize and manage a global network of permafrost observations for monitoring changes in the permafrost. Part of this network are the Thermal State of Permafrost Observation Network, which coordinates measurements of permafrost temperature, and the Circumpolar Active Layer Monitoring Observation Network, which coordinates measurements of active layer thickness. Data from these networks is collected in a centralized database and made available to the public, providing interested researchers worldwide with valuable information on the extent, distribution, vulnerability, and behavior of permafrost. Still, more key parameters need to be regularly measured in order to better monitor the permafrost status. Permafrost around the world has begun to change. It does not seem permanent anymore. The international community has to address these imminent changes. With the coordinated action of national governments and international organizations, we can have the tools and knowledge to address the impacts of permafrost degradation in a warming climate.